Hi everybody, Craig here. Welcome back to the Battle for Westnoth campaign, Heir to the Throne. In our last episode, we began scenario number four, which involved us arriving at the Bay of Pearls in order to liberate the mermen who had been enslaved by the evil queen Ashavir. And thankfully, we were able to do quite a bit of that. So we began over here at this camp, kind of on the this tiny little island, and we were able to make landfall with our, our main troops, but then we encountered a number of mermen who were in, basically in cages, and as we freed them, we were able to kind of bring the fight to the, to the water as the mermen forces joined us. And as you can see here, we've got these two orcish warlords. And just to remind everybody of our objectives for this battle. So again, the Bay of Pearls, our victory condition is to defeat one enemy leader and resist the other until the turns run out. Alternatively, we could defeat all enemy leaders and get an early finish bonus if we do that. And as you can see, we have 21 turns to do so. Now our defeat condition again is the death of Conrad. And if our turns run out with both enemy leaders standing, that would also result in our defeat. We have 13 turns left currently, and there is that gold carryover. So as you can see here, we do have two enemy warlords, both of them orcs here. So we have the one that's on land and the one that's kind of in the, in the sea. And as you can see, though, we have successfully made landfall, and we've really survived the main push by the land uh, forces, which involved a lot of orcish warriors, which were level 2 highly powerful melee units. But we've survived that quite well. And we've also weathered the storm in the water. You can see here that there really isn't much in the way of troops left. All he has is a vampire bat. And we were able to survive that along with some Naga forces. So now if you move up here, you can see that we are trying to get this, this final... Um, caged unit of uh, presumably multiple mermen, as it did sound like the bulk of the mermen forces were being uh, held up here. And you can see guarded by still one remaining Naga. So this episode, we're going to see if we can basically get that done. And there's also this trident up here. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but my guess is it's some kind of upgrade. So I'm definitely going to want one of my units to head up there and make sure I grab that as well. Now, before I dive into the episode, I did just want to give a couple of quick shout outs to a few individuals who left some excellent comments on the previous episode. The first of those comments is from Oni Rusinen. Now, Oni pointed out that when I'm recruiting a new unit, I had mentioned that I'm sort of rolling the dice with a new set of traits. And that's true, but Oni is pointing out that when I actually go into the recruitment screen, I can actually see the traits of the next unit I'm going to be recruiting. So it's actually less kind of random than I than I thought it was. So thank you to Oni for pointing that out. Next time I have the opportunity to recruit a unit, I will take a look at that and just make sure um, that everyone kind of knows what I'm talking about. Because I've moved Conrad off of my uh, encampment here, I'm not able to recruit any units currently. And I, I'm doing this because I want Conrad to maybe try and get some action before the battle ends. But we'll see if that ends up happening. Um, in any case, uh, thank you to Oni for that excellent point. The next comment here is from Thomas Hazelwood. I had sort of lamented my luck in the last episode uh, that certain roles really weren't going my way, but uh, Thomas makes a great point here that, you know, in reality, I really haven't lost very many units. I think it's just one that I've really lost, if I'm not mistaken. And I've actually done very, very well in terms of gaining experience here. You can see that we have a mage that's very close to leveling up. And I haven't lost really any of my important sort of loyal units or anything like that. So really, all in all, this has actually been a very, very good battle for me so far. But I don't want to jinx it. So we're going to keep pushing this episode. But um, again, a big thank you to everybody for those comments. And we're going to dive right in and get this, uh, you know, part two of this scenario going. So last time we left it, I had moved most of my troops, as you can see here. But we did still have some movement left with a few of our units. So you can see we do have a merman fighter here that is just sitting on the village. I think we're probably going to leave him there. Let's just double check. Yeah, and then we had kind of arranged our forces here um, to just kind of sit where they are. And that's going to do it there. I think we're, I think we're good. So um, my plan was to kind of arrange these units in such a way that um, I'm, I'm trying to goad and sort of... Uh, uh, force this Naga warrior to come out to attack me. And once it does, I'm then hoping I can swoop one of my other units over and grab this cage set of what are presumably uh, multiple mermen units. And that's going to then allow me to then overwhelm this Naga. We can grab the trident and then move in to try and finish off the orcish warrior, who is going to be tough to deal with given that he's on land. And that means we're probably going to have to send our mermen onto land where they're not as comfortable. So let's end our turn there and see what happens next. 
Okay, so there we go. The Naga has come over. Oh, and sadly, he killed off one of my... One of my poor... <laughs> um, mermen there. Again, I think it was unavoidable I was going to lose at least one of them there. Um, nice. Okay, we're getting some good healing back. Now, what this does do... Oh, and unfortunately, I must have had this unit set to move. That's um, not what I wanted, but that's okay. Um, so now we can we can swarm on this Naga, but unfortunately, we can't quite make it over to this um, cage set of mermen just yet. So what I'm hoping we can do is swarm on this Naga warrior and get the kill. The only problem is that would necessitate us moving out onto the deep water, as you can see there. Let's undo that just for a second. All right, we should take stock of what we have. So if I can get the killing blow with Jarla, although it might be enough to just do some damage because you can see here we have 27 out of 29. Just doing damage might be enough to actually get us um, the level up and then evolve into the next... Um, the level 2 version of the Merman Fighter. Uh, I don't know if I want to test that theory out, though. That's the only thing. So let's see, what are our odds here if we... Whoops. So what are our odds if we try to attack? Oh, this... Yeah, the Naga Warrior is going to do some decent damage to us. And let me just double check. So this unit is neutral. Okay. So we don't have to worry about the time of day. But unfortunately, our units being... Um, lawful are going to start suffering a penalty here as it moves into the night so if we, if we are going to attack we should probably do it now while it is still um dusk where we at least aren't suffering a penalty we aren't getting any benefit though the only problem is if this if this hits too many times this unit's going to die before it can even evolve which is not great so let's maybe use some of our other units before we try to attack the naga okay um Let's see. This guy has the most health, so let's try and see what we can do here. Nice. Okay, excellent. Okay, and we didn't die, but we did take a lot of damage. We did manage to hit twice. That's really good for us. Um. Okay, and then maybe with this fighter, we can step over. Um. One thing we have done here is we've cut off the... Naga's movement a little bit so that we could at least head over with this fighter and we would have the severely restricted movement here for this Naga. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do exactly that. I'll head over like this and then between these these ones that are left here I can try and um, do some more damage here. So let's see if we can manage a little bit more. Oh, I'm, I'm so hesitant to do this though. Oh, again, because, you know, if I attack, there's a good chance this unit might end up dead. Same goes for this one. Again, and we really don't want to lose this one with all its health. Or, excuse me, with all the experience it's gained. Maybe what I'll do instead is I'll park right here. So let's see, does that restrict... It does restrict a good chunk of the movement. Whoops. And then... Man, this, yeah, this is kind of a tough call. Because, again, if I move into attack and I get killed, then all this experience goes down the drain. So maybe what I'll do is I'll head north kind of with this guy. Just be... I'll play it kind of safe here. I'll go one more, maybe. Like that. Oh, shoot, he can still go out to attack me. Dang it. All right, well, if that's the case, then you know what? We should just attack. Try and soften him up. Nice. Oh, dang it, we lost him. That's a real shame. Okay, well, and now he can move up and attack either unit. That didn't work out as well as I was hoping. Okay, well, let's move to the, the battle on land here. So we do have a troll whelp that is, again, going to be susceptible to ranged attacks. So what I'd really like to do is get the level up here uh, with, uh, with my mage. So I want to try and land the killing blow with my mage. Um, so seven times three. So we want to whittle this guy down before we get our mage in there. So one thing we definitely could do is use our other mage to do some damage. And in doing so, that would give us... You know what? One thing I could do is actually move up here. Let's do that. There we go. And then we can do some bow attacks. Okay, perfect. So then we're going to send our mage up and do some damage. We want to get some experience with our mage as well. 
because this is our loyal mage, don't forget, um, Elrian. So it'd be nice to level him up, get him evolved if we can. So now, between the rest of our units, we can try and do some more damage. So I think with this scout, I'd like to do some bow hits. Very nice. Um, our fighter can join in on the fun as well. Very nice. Okay, we're at nine health, so we would have to still hit twice. Ooh, and I could still, I could conceivably get the kill, which I don't really want to do. What about this? Okay, we're not going to get the kill. That's perfect. Let's go for the entangle. Perfect. There we go. Now it's a one hit for our mage. So now let's get in there. Try and get the kill. Perfect. Okay, and here we go. So now we have a level up. So we can turn our mage into either a white mage or a red mage. So the red mage is more damage focused, as you can see here, um, with a melee attack and then a, a very powerful fire-based ranged magic attack. Whereas the white mage has the cure and healing plus eight, along with a melee attack and then a, still a pretty decent magic attack here uh, that's arcane based. I think I'm going to take the white mage because I'd really like to have uh, more healing. And in particular, because this unit has quick, that's going to allow my healer to kind of get into, you know, stay along with my my fighting force on the front line. So I'm going to grab the white mage. So I'm super happy to have um, a white mage now. That's going to make a big difference for me. Okay, so now we've got this troll whelp who needs to be killed next. So... Our ranger's probably going to be able to do some work. So maybe one thing we'll do is we'll cruise on up with our um, scout here. We do have to be a little bit careful. Oh, and we have our sharpshooter as well. The one thing is I actually don't want to get the kill with the sharpshooter because the sharpshooter's already um, maxed out. So let's, yeah, let's step up and just do some damage. That actually worked out perfectly. So now what we can do, um, we can figure out who we want to get the experience with. Our horseman wouldn't be bad. Our ranger's about halfway. Um, our knight is doing quite well for experience. Actually, getting some ex uh, experience with the horseman wouldn't be bad. Yeah, let's give that a shot. Nice. There we go. That's huge. Okay, that's getting us much closer to a level up. Send our scout over. Now it's just going to be sort of moving everybody up to the front lines here. You know what? Let's go here. We can heal our other shaman a little bit. Um, you know what? With our knight, let's sit next to our white mage for the healing. We can st sit next to our shaman for some healing. And then we will advance with our ranger pretty aggressively. There we go. Meanwhile, Conrad's just going to bring up the rear along with another mage. Very good. Okay. Now, meanwhile, down here, you can see we've got a whelp that's in the water and is uh, kind of exposed. So, should be able to hit and do some damage here. So, let's do that. Nice. Okay. I would like to get the kill with this fighter. So, now let's see if I go over like this. Try and do some damage. Nice. Very nice. Okay. There is the chance for me to get the kill. I would have to land all three hits, though. That's a little dangerous, but I think it's worth the risk. Let's try it. Nice. No! Oh, that sucks. The odds of us getting hit twice were so low, and we lost the unit. That's such a shame, because we were right about to level up. Ah. Dang it. Oh, well. Okay, well, that's what happens sometimes. You just you can't, you can't win them all. Um, and we're going to end it there. Now, let's see what happens up here. I'm a little nervous. Oh, and there goes another one. Yeah, things are not going... Oh, no. Yeah, things are not going as, as well as I was hoping on the water side here. Nice. Good healing there. At least on land, things are still going well. And it's definitely not the end of the world on the water, but not quite as well as I was hoping. So, yeah, sadly, this... Merman Fighter is about to level up, but he's also in really rough shape. So, you know what? I'm actually going to send him over to the cage here. Death to the orcs. Come, my brethren. Let us fight the orcs and drive them from our shores. 
Well, this is excellent. So you can see here that we have um, some additional merman units. So we have a merman fighter. And then we have a hunter who is a, a ranged unit here, you can see. Um, or at least has some range capability. Let's take a look. So, yeah, he has a melee attack that does piercing with a spear. And then he also has a ranged attack where he throws spears. So that's really good. Um, and the merman netcaster, I remember... Um, being a very, very powerful unit from a previous uh, campaign that I played. And it has an ability that has slow with this net throw. So I would love to try and get this net caster. That would be amazing. If I can level up this uh, hunter, that is. Okay, so then what else did we get? And we also have a mermaid initiate who has... Oh, it's it's a this is the, um, the, the uh, merman magic unit. So if we take a look... Okay, and progresses to either a priestess or an enchantress. Very cool. So we have a staff attack, and then we also have a water-based uh, magic attack. That's really cool. Really, really cool there. So yeah, it's a magical type attack. Oh, that is fantastic. It's actually... Oh, and it's interesting. It's actually an impact-based ranged attack. That's kind of a bit of a surprise. Okay, well, one thing we definitely could do is move over with our new initiate and put some hurt on this naga let's see yeah we could really do some big damage and then try for the kill perhaps um the other option is we could use our caster to try and kill the bat um well the bat's going to be a lot harder to hit so it might actually be wise to do this on the bat then the only danger is the naga warrior is going to be doing more damage probably Hmm, decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to go for the bat here. Shoot, and we didn't get the kill. Okay, well then, let's go tie up. Actually, let's see if maybe we can get the finish here. Nice, and we did. Okay, great. So then, our hunter can step on down and do some spear throwing. Nice. Okay, good damage there. And then between our two fighters, we should be able to get the finish here. So we got Loyal and Quick, Loyal and Resilient. I'm going to send the Resilient one in first, I think. Shoot, and we didn't land any of our hits. That's brutal. Okay, let's try again. Just need two hits. Perfect. There we go. So nice experience gain as well. And then our fighter over here, again, it would be amazing to level him up, but... Uh, he's he's not in great shape, so we'll send him down this way. Okay, I think that's going to do it for our turn. Oh, and then, of course, now we've got this whelp who needs to be dealt with. Um, so we've got a little bit more experience with this guy, so maybe what we'll do is we'll attack first here. Okay, that's fine. We can just get the kill there. That also works. And then this bat is going to be annoying to deal with. So let's maybe just sit on our village, get some health back, and see if the bat comes out to attack us. That would make our life just a little bit easier. Okay, and then we've got a, uh, an orcish archer that we have to deal with. So melee attacks are probably going to be what we want to use. He's going to have higher defense being that he's on the village there. So, hmm... All right, let's think about this. So if we head up like this, we could do some sword attacks. Again, not ideal given that it is nighttime currently. So we do have to be a little bit cautious here, actually. Let's see, what are our odds to hit? Yeah, not great. Hmm. I do have to be kind of careful here. I don't want to overcommit. I think I can probably put my, my ranger in there without too much worry. Let's try it. Okay, well, at least we hit once, he hit once, so kind of tit for tat. We did a little bit more damage, though, thankfully. And we can try the same thing with our scout, actually. So let's try that on for size. All right, well, we hit once, he hit once. So again, pretty good trade there. Um, I'm going to put my horseman on the village to get some health back, I think. Keep this scout on the, the village as well. Then everybody else, I'm going to just move up pretty aggressively here, I think. Um, 
just gonna kind of progress as far as far uh, up as we can here move our healer in as well So our scout can actually... Now we have another scout that can advance in and do some additional sword attacks. So let's try that. I realize I've actually put myself in a position where with these ranged attacks, I could be in some trouble. Um, I think I don't think any of my units will be able to be killed directly though. So that, that should be fine. Um, you know what? We'll move over like this and get my mage a little closer. Conrad, we're going to just keep moving. And this mage, same thing. Meanwhile, our knight can advance up here. I think that's going to about do it for our movement. Yeah, all right, we're going to end it there. I am kind of sad that I... Maybe I jinxed it a little bit by saying, oh, and we didn't lose that many units last episode. But we did end up losing, unfortunately, some of our mermen. Okay, pretty good outcome that turn. Nothing too crazy happened. The bat, however, did come onto land to kind of mess with us. So one thing we could do, though, is head over here and just try to get some more experience with our mermen in the water. Um, this one, we'll just grab this village. Let's see. Maybe we can get the kill here with our trident. Let's try it. Nice. There we go. Some more experience for our fighter. That's really good. Um, and now we just have to deal with this archer. So... Our shaman can actually get in there as well and, you know, put a slow on. We're going to take bow damage if we try that, though. Uh, if all three hit, it wouldn't kill us. So, I mean, we could do it. All right, let's try it. I mean, it's low odds, but let's at least give it a shot. Before we do that, though, yeah, our mage can't quite make it. All right, well, we'll try it. Nice, we got the slow. We took some damage, but nothing we can't handle. And then now we can kind of just whittle away this archer with some melee attacks, probably. Um, you know what? I wouldn't mind getting this horseman in there to help with that. But one thing we can do with this scout, let's do some sword attacks here. A okay, nice little bit of damage. Um, our ranger actually might end up getting the kill. You know what, let's send our horseman in and try just outright for the kill here. Nice, there it is. Okay, one more kill with this unit and we should get the, the level up, which is perfect. I can move our mage up. We want someone to sit on this village. Probably someone who needs to heal a little bit. Um, might be a good spot for our white mage, actually. And I say that because we've got a lot of units gathered around that could benefit from the healing. Go. Let's just keep progressing north. Got this fighter. Come in here. Now we do have to be careful. If we head across to that village, um, we're probably going to end up in a fight, which we'll have to be, like I said, careful about. What I'm going to do is go like this, and then like this, and I'm going to move my shaman up so I get a little bit of healing on the ranger at least. My Elvish hero can advance, Archer, and my Knight can also get a little more healing from the Shaman there. And this guy's in pretty good shape, so we'll move him up, grab a little healing from that village while we're at it. Oh, and you know what? I missed one down here that I could have captured. That's too bad. Now, maybe I'll send this scout actually back down now that I... Hang on, we can undo that move. There we go. And then, yeah, let's head down and capture it. Now, back to the water situation. So, Nega is dead. The bat's dead. So, the only thing left, we're going to go grab this trident. So, let's send this fighter up, maybe, to go grab it. And at least find out what that does for us. And then, in the meantime, we want to get ourselves in position to try and start dealing with this warrior. We have to be very careful with this fighter because he's so hurt. We really don't want him dying on us. We want to get him promoted if we can. Um... And then over here, we've got our two mermen. So we've got quite a few units to at least try and deal with this warrior. Um, I, I think our um, our mage here is actually going to come in handy quite a bit. So let's see. 
Got to be careful, though. I don't want to move in too close. Maybe what I'll do is I'll go like this. Try to kind of goad him into attacking me while I'm at least in the water where I've got more defense. Kind of just stack up a little bit like this. Okay. In the meantime, yeah, we're going to try and grab this and see what it does for us. Hopefully it's an upgrade. It's kind of my hunch on that, but we'll see. All right, I think that's going to do it for our turn, so we'll end it there. Okay, and here's more units, so that's a little bit annoying. So we got this troll now to deal with. Okay, that's going to probably be a job for a lot of our ranged units here, I'm thinking. So first things first, let's throw on uh, an entangle if we can. You have to be mindful that there is also that archer. And units that we put up here are probably going to get attacked by the warrior. So just something to remember. Um, again, if we can get the kill with the horseman, that would be fantastic. Let's put the ranger here and do some bow damage. Hopefully that ranger isn't in too much trouble. He does have higher defense on the village, so I'm hoping that's okay. Um, this merman we can actually send in as well to try and maybe get the kill if the horseman doesn't. We could go, yeah, we could go like that. Um, would be nice to get this horseman to level up, though. So, let's see. What's our best course of action here? Um, we have a scout that has a bit of experience there already. So, let's maybe send him in. Do a little bit of bow damage. Nice. There we go. Getting a little more experience. And then, how much health do we have? 18... Charge in 16 times 2. Okay, we want to get him down to uh, at least 16 before we charge in there. So, you know what? Maybe we go, maybe we do want to get our fighter in there. Little, I'm a little nervous though, because if I do that, he's going to get attacked by these two units, potentially our merman, and I don't want the merman dying. So this merman fighter though can. Definitely advance inwards here. And then up here. Okay, yeah, you know what? I've been excited about this for a while. So let's grab this. Should um, we pick up the trident? I'm going to take it. Storm trident. This trident gives merfolk the power to throw lightning at their enemies. Pretty cool. Oh, look at this. Okay, so we now have a ranged attack. 14 times 2 storm trident. It's magical. And its damage type is fire. Okay, now that is going to be really good. And that's actually going to come in handy against this warlord because he doesn't have a ranged attack. So, oh, that's uh, that's amazing. I'm very, very happy about that. Yeah, I just wish I could heal my units a bit in the water here. And I don't want to put them on the village because then they're just going to get attacked by the warlord. But I am going to have to commit to the attack at some point. I suppose one thing I could do is start sending some of my land units into the water. That's just going to take them forever to get there. Um, maybe I send my sharpshooter over or something. Uh, you know what? I'll send my archer at least something. It's going to be a while before it gets there, though. That's the only concern. Um, okay, so let, let me uh, get back to this. So we're at 18. So we want to whittle him down just a little bit more if we can. You have to be kind of careful, though. If I send my scout in, he's probably going to get attacked. All right, let's do this. Okay, that's pretty good. And now we can try for the kill with the horseman. If we don't get it, though, we get a 70% chance. We just have to hit one time. Come on, next time. Yes! Excellent. There's a level up. Okay, we can get a knight or a lancer. Now, it looks like the lancer is a dead end. That's the... the end of the evolutionary tree there whereas the knight can evolve one more time so the knight is uh more of a jack of all trades when it comes to melee whereas the lancer looks like it's basically just really prioritizing the pierce damage and doing that charge based attack with the lance so i'm actually going to go for the knight i think I, I like the versatility and that it can evolve one more time um, all right, so the white mage can step up. I just don't want to put the white mage right there because then I'm going to be in danger from 
the warrior who can dish out a ton of melee, da uh, really heavy melee damage. Don't want that. So currently my units that are going to take the brunt of it are going to be the ranger and the scout. So I think that's actually fine. Now this unit, we probably want to go back and maybe heal up on a village a little bit. Actually, one thing we could do is sit right here and get a little bit of healing from the shaman. Could even move the white mage up like this. There we go. And then we'll get some nice healing on the fighter. Um, sharpshooter can get some healing as well. Conrad can advance. As can our mage. Um, this mage as well can move up. We're just going to get people into the water so they can start at least trying to get across. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Now the question is, how do we handle this situation? So there is a Nagini now, which is a bit of an issue. Um, I don't want to just let them come out to face me, I think. I guess one thing, I could grab a village. The only problem is if I do that, this unit's almost certainly going to come under attack. Now let's try it and see what happens. Again, I suspect this, this unit's just going to get annihilated, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I don't want my... Perfect. Okay, I was going to say, I don't want the Nagini attacking any of these units, so as long as we're protected from them... And then this fighter is going to come in to uh, provide that extra magic damage, which I'm really excited about. And this guy can capture this village. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think I'm just going to leave this guy right where he is and let the Nagini come to me. Okay, we're going to end it right there, I think. Just double check that we've done all the movement we wanted. Oh, and this shaman can advance as well. Um... I think we'll go this way. There we go. Our hero can also step up a little bit. All right, perfect. Okay, as expected, the Nagini came out to face me in the water. Yeah, and that's not really a surprise going after my scout that's in the water because it has lower defense. Okay. Move this scout up. Now the question is, how long is it going to... Oh yeah, it's really going to take me a while to get through the water. So I'm really going to have to rely on my merman, I think, for this fight. Um, so one thing now I can do is... Oh, and I can't quite get in there. But I can bring this unit over and do some magic damage at least. I go like this, and then... Yeah, that's fine. So I can step down, do some water spray. Ooh, perfect. That's huge. Okay, great. And then I can step down with my hunter, maybe. And I do have to be very cautious. Oh, I'm so afraid of these greatsword attacks, but thankfully at least it's during the day, so I should be fine. Come over and do some spear throwing. Nice, we landed one. Oh, perfect, and we got the kill. That's exactly what we needed. Um, and then this guy, unfortunately, is going to have to probably stay out there. Uh, meanwhile, with this guy, you know what? Let's step over and grab this village. And in a perfect world, I'd bring this guy down to here, but if I do that, he's going to get attacked probably by the warrior and just die. So I don't want that to happen. So we're going to advance in behind like this. And this guy's going to move down to bring his magic power to bear. I'm so excited to see that in action. All right, so then this warlord, we can just swarm on him now. First, we got to deal with this archer. Um, okay. Fortunately, that water is causing us some issues. So one thing we can do, though, get this fighter across and do some sword attacks. <laughs> Perfect. That actually went super well. We didn't take any damage, and we did quite a bit in return. Now, if I can get the kill with the scout, that would be ideal here. We, we would get the evolution, which would be exactly what we need. Um, fortunately, no one else can really hit this guy to weaken him easily. I suppose our shaman could, but I wouldn't mind having a shaman in there to 
curse the warrior with a slow. You know what? That's not the worst idea. Maybe go like this. Just wanna, I just want to weaken him enough that I'm more more assured of getting the kill with my gout here. Ranger's going to probably kill him. Um, and maybe what I'll do is if I move the scout over to here and then move somebody else to where the scout is. So who can go there? Actually, this you know what? This is a great job for the fighter. Um, although he might, yeah, he would probably just get the kill outright. So that's not what I necessarily want. Who else can go in? I suppose the white mage could step in and just do some melee attacks. But again, if both hit, we'd get the kill. That's not the deal. Shaman could go on to the village. Yeah, you know what? That's not bad. How much do we do with our sword? Four. So we'd have to hit... We want to probably have them down to eight. So we have to hit twice. It's probably what we're looking at. Um... You know what? Conrad can even get in there and do some damage. Just have to be careful. We don't want to put him in a spot where the Warlord can just step up and obliterate him. Um, but again, we, we can also get our Shaman in there to try to slow. What are our odds? Oh, they're not actually that good. So that's a bit of a risk there. And this Shaman's getting close to leveling up. So we don't want to lose our Shaman if we can avoid it. Okay, I know I'm hemming and hawing over this a lot, but I just want to make sure I do this right so that I minimize losses and maximize my potential gains out of this one. One thing I guess we could do is park our ranger like here and prevent him from moving down. That's not bad. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. We'll go like this. And yeah, now he's, he's much more limited in where he can go. So actually now we can... We have a lot more freedom, so... Like this, what are eh? The only problem is hitting him once only takes him down to nine health, which doesn't really help us. And we want to get it down to eight. So, who else could go there? Um, our white mage could and do a staff attack again, as long as we don't hit twice. I mean, if we end up not getting the level up here, that's fine. It's just that would be much that would be preferable. What about oh, I forgot about this scout. As long as we don't hit all three, we should be fine. So maybe let's try that. Oh. Okay, pro, that was perfect. Okay, I was starting to get nervous there, but we're fine. So now we just have to hit one time. We should evolve. Perfect. Nice. Now we have an Elvish Rider. That's a level two unit. That's perfect. Very, very nice. Okay. Now the big question. Do we want to risk our Shaman that has the experience in there to get us slow? I think so, because the, the odds of him hitting me are pretty low. So let's try it. Yes, and we got it. That's exactly what we needed. Okay, great. Now we can just whittle him down. Everybody we have left. And he's way less dangerous in melee now, so we can we can be a lot more kind of fast and loose with it. Um, I'm actually going to even start sending this shaman over to try to get over there. Won't happen, but we can try. And same with this merman. I'll get him in there. Um, and this one will advance in as well. Okay. So now everybody can just kind of flow across the water here. We can actually capture this village while we're up here too. Um, so the only other people that can actually hit him at the moment are our knights and our ranger. Okay, well, let's do the damage with our ranger if we can here. Nice. Okay, two hits. That's pretty good. Um... No one else can actually get over there currently. So let's take our knight, charge right in. And you know what? We could go for the kill right now. Let's do it. Well, we'd have to hit both times. That's... Yeah, we missed both. Thankfully, we only took one hit in retaliation, so that's totally fine. Move our white mage over here just to provide healing. Uh, we have our other knight that we could charge in and do the same thing. Ah, let's, let's try it. Okay, we missed both times. We did take a little bit of punishment, but I think we'll be all right there. Uh, Conrad can advance. Mages can advance. Start sending our units into the water here, because this this is presumably about to end, and then we need to deal with this guy. So, 
Um, let's see, what else can we do? I think that's pretty much everybody that we needed to move for sure. Yeah, all right, we'll end it there. Okay, so he went out to the village. I'm a little surprised at that, but uh, he does... Unfortunately, he's now going to have healing there, and he's in a position where he still has pretty high defense at 60%. So, shoot. Okay, well, one thing we can do, we have all this magic damage now, and we're... Oh, look at that. That's massive. Okay, so let's let's see what we can manage. So we can soften him up here with some attack. So let's try our water spray here. Oh, no. Now this unit's in big trouble. Again, I think we'll be fine, but that's dangerous. Okay, and we'll try some spear throwing. Okay, that's great. We hit a couple of times. Now, our storm trident unit, we can't afford to lose this guy. So if he does come in and do the damage, as long as we don't get hit with all three attacks, we should be fine. We have 60% defense there, so the odds are in our favor, I would say. So let's come on down. Like, what are the odds if we were to do this? What are the odds we would die? 6.4% um, chance of us dying, so I'm not too worried about that. So let's do our Storm Trident attack. Okay, we hit one time. Kind of unfortunate, but... With this guy, we're going to head down. Oh, you know what? We can actually swim over here and do some more damage to him. Or try to. So let's... Ah, uh, you know what, though? that That's a bit of a risk. Because he can attack any of these units and they shouldn't die. As long as he doesn't hit this one twi uh, three times, he should survive. He, he can do a maximum of 24 damage right now. So I think... Ooh, what's the next? Oh, it's going to be Dusk, though. Oh, and he's, he's going to do more damage. Shoot. Okay, well, what we'll do is we'll move this guy over. And try and do some work. Okay, at least we hit him once, so that softened him up a little bit. And with this guy, we're going to head down to this village. And... Oh, you know what? Actually, can we undo that? Yeah, we want. I'm going to send this guy down to this village to get some health back. Meanwhile, this guy's going to go here. Uh, no, he's going to stay out of it. We'll put him here. Okay. So now we can probably finish off this guy. Um, oh, and he, he did summon a wolf rider as well. So that's going to be maybe some more free experience. But one thing we definitely want to do is try and get a slow on there if we can. Um, so we'll move over here with the shaman. Try for that slow. Nice, and we got it. Okay, great. Now we can be a little bit more aggressive with it. <clears throat> so, um, we also still have to deal with his wolf rider, so let's not forget about that. Now, the, the big question is, who do we want to get the kill with and, and optimize our experience gain? So, definitely getting some with this mage would be great. Our loyal mage, that would be very, very good. Um, so, let's maybe use our in here are excuse me our ranger do some bow attacks okay good we did some damage there um, we can do some sword attacks with our knight if we do get the kill that'd be fine but probably won't okay we at least hit there okay so now we just have to hit twice that should be possible oh as i say that oh and we missed all three are you absolutely serious Oh, that's frustrating. Okay. Well, now we have to get a little bit creative. So, um, we also have to deal with this wolf rider who is a threat to my shaman right now. It's kind of, oh, that's so frustrating. Um, the white mage can step over and do some light beam on the wolf rider. So let's do that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. Oh, that just straight up got the kill. That's fine too. Um... looking at my options here all right we can send the rider or maybe this scout over to get the, try and get the kill um let's maybe see if we can get the kill with the rider Ooh, we're not going to get that kill though unfortunately odds are very low let's try it anyway 
and we missed both. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating. Um, oh, I forgot about this knight. Okay, we can try for the kill here. Um, what are our odds here? We got a 64% chance with the lance versus 52% chance. So let's try the lance. Nice, there it is. And big boost of experience for our knight. Um, so now Conrad... I mean, I guess we can put him in here. Can he recruit? Oh, he can. So now we can actually look at that. So if we click on this guy... Okay, so it doesn't actually show us the traits. So maybe we don't know what they're going to have before we recruit them. What if we go to... Like, I know what their, their potential traits are going to be here, but I don't actually know if it does show me the um the upcoming traits here so that's that's too bad um but we can obviously see it if we're going to recall a unit again these are the units we previously had and you can see their traits there so I, I guess it is still rolling the dice unless maybe i'm misunderstanding what uh, what oni had mentioned um maybe i do have to click in here let me see what is this uh no that's not going to do it so anyway let's see maybe it says here Recruited, recruited units come with two random traits which modify their statistics. Okay, yeah, it doesn't say anything about that. So, anyway, I, I may have misunderstood, but in any case, um, at least we got to kind of test that out. So now all we got to do is kill off this guy, and we have him in good in a good position where we might be able to get the finish here. So, um, let's swoop around with these two. And I think we're going to basically end it there because... Yeah, I don't think there's even any real advantage to trying to move anybody else anywhere else. So let's just end it. Oh, and he's going after the... Oh, okay, thank goodness. So she survived. Okay, that was important. I was really worried that that initiate was going to die, but thankfully she's still alive. Um, now, the big question is, do we want to maybe try and get the kill with this guy now that he's um, healthier from being on that village? So kind of do want to try it so what are our odds of getting so we'd have to hit we want to get we want to whittle him down to less health so that's important so with our initiate let's we, we have to make sure we get the kill though so let's do our water spray. nice and we hit both times okay five health so we're going to try and get the kill here with our fighter to level him up we just have to hit one time so let's try it the only danger is if we get hit more than once we're dead oh that's risky we only have a 9% chance of dying. He has a 76% chance, so I'm I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yes. At last, we have freed the merfolk. Go back to the ocean and live in peace. My lord, you may need the help of some of us who have skill in the sea in the future. We would like to come with you and offer you help. You may now recruit the noble merfolk. Now, where is Delphidor? I hope he's safe. I am perfectly safe, friend. There you are. I am so glad you are all right. Now we may have a little rest. I am afraid there is no time for rest, Conrad. Ashavir has laid siege to a Lensafar, breaking the century-old treaty between Westnoth and the Elens city-state. If the city falls, there is no telling how many other lands she may swallow up. Oh no, what shall we do? You must lead your men to the city. Help defend it or recapture it if it falls before you arrive. I must do that, but what about you, Delphidor? You're coming with me, right? I'm afraid not, Conrad. I have come across some important documents and must make haste with them to the Elven Council. It seems that the time to stop Ashavir is shorter than I had thought. But Delphidor, I can't do it on my own. On your own? My lord, we, your loyal soldiers, will support you. You will prevail. I have faith in you. Head north. A lens so far is but three days' travel if you make haste. Very well. But how do I get there? There are two ways to go, by ship or on foot. Each has its own dangers. You must choose between them. So we've got ships. Ugh. I have been seasick for the last time. We shall walk. Or, going by ship, we may at least get a little rest for ourselves. By sea it is. Well, 
you know, since I now have quite a few merfolk units that are going to be at my disposal, I'm thinking maybe going the aquatic route would be better. Because um, presumably if I ended up getting into any kind of trouble on the ocean, I would at least have merfolk to kind of help me. So I'm thinking probably going by ship would be my, my choice. So I'm going to say going by ship. We may get a, at least a little rest for ourselves. By sea it is. Safe voyage to you then, Conrad. May the weather be fair. There you have it. Scenario number four has been completed. So we managed to wrap this up um, by killing both the enemy leaders, which was the alternate victory condition. Um, so we had 176 gold remaining. We finished five turns early, 24 per turn early finish bonus. And we had a total, uh, total bonus of 120. So our total gold was just shy of 300 at 296, carrying 40% of that forward. So we start next scenario with 118 bonus gold. That's not shab not too shabby at all. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So it'll be interesting to see what the, the next scenario brings with our, our boat trip. And again, I'm very, very happy to have these merfolk. So let's just quickly, before we end this episode, let's take a look. So we managed to, here it is, a merman warrior. So that's kind of a pure upgrade, it looks like, on our, uh, our fighters here. So you can see they do uh, six damage on three hits, where we have 10 damage on three hits. So that's a, a big upgrade. Very, very happy to have a, a level two merman. And then, of course, we also have here a few that are close to leveling up. Actually, quite a few. You can see um, our one that has the Storm Trident, who we're definitely going to want to try to evolve. You can see there he has about a uh, little over halfway. Same goes for this guy here, right around halfway. Our Hunter is doing well and getting some experience. And we did get a little bit as well with our Initiate, who I'm excited to level up. I'm, I'm wondering if one of her upgrades is going to be a healer class, which would be excellent. Um, as we don't really have healing for our merman out in the water. And then this guy as well has quite a bit of experience. So all in all, I, I was a little bit sad that I lost a few of my merman this episode, but overall, I'm still quite happy with the outcome. So I think this is where we're going to leave it. So we are going to save the game here and call this complete. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.